genes, DNA, and chromosomes are what make you who you are. They are the set of instructions that are given to you by your father and mother. These instructions are in your cells, and all living organisms are composed of cells. There are many different types, like nerve cells and hair cells and skin cells. They all have different shapes and forms, but every cell has the same basic parts. The cell has an outer border called the membrane, which contains a liquid material called cytoplasm. In the cytoplasm is the nucleus, and inside the nucleus are chromosomes. In humans, each cell normally contains 23 pairs of chromosomes, for a total of 46. 22 of these pairs, called autosomes, look the same in both males and females. The 23rd pair, the sex chromosomes, differ between males and females. Females have two copies of the X chromosome, while males have one X and one Y chromosome. The chromosomes are really long strings of DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid. DNA is shaped like a ladder that's been twisted. This shape is called a double helix. The steps of the ladder are made of four bases. Adenine is A, thymine is T, guanine is G, and cytosine is C. A stretch of the DNA is called a gene. Your body reads the genes and the letters like a recipe and builds protein. The order of the bases in the DNA, along with the length and sequence of the gene, determines the size and shape of the protein it builds. The size and shape of the protein determine the function it will have in your body. Proteins make up cells, cells make up tissue, and tissue makes up organs, like your eyes and your skin. So the genes determine what you are, a cow, an apple, or a human, and what you will look like, the color of your hair, your skin, your eyes, and so on. Your body is made up of 50 trillion cells. Cells come in many different varieties, with many different functions. But inside almost every cell is a nucleus, containing 99.9% .9 of your genes, and mitochondria, containing a few more genes. All told, you have nearly 20,000 genes. Your genes are small parts of a long molecule called DNA, or deoxyribonucleic acid. If you lined up all of the DNA, containing all of your genes, it would measure six feet long. But it's coiled so tightly that it fits in just one cell nucleus. DNA is a double-stranded molecule composed of sugar, phosphate, and four different bases. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine. These bases spell out the language known as the genetic code. The number and order of these four bases determine, for example, whether you are a chimp, a cow, a banana, or a human. Most genes are recipes for making specific proteins. These recipes are passed down from parents to children, from generation to generation. When someone says, you have your father's hair, what they mean is, you appear to have inherited a gene or genes from your father that makes a protein that instructs your hair follicle cells to produce hair that curls like your father's. But they usually opt for the shorter version. Genes tell a cell 
how to function and what traits to express. More specifically, gene regulators turn different genes on and off in different cells to control cell function. The long molecules of DNA containing your genes are organized into pieces called chromosomes. Different species have different numbers of chromosomes. Humans usually have 46 chromosomes, two sets of 23, or simply 23 pairs of chromosomes. Chimpanzees have two sets of 24, or 24 pairs of chromosomes. Rhesus monkeys have 21 pairs of chromosomes. Cows have 30 pairs of chromosomes. Chickens have 39 pairs. Fruit flies have 4 pairs. And bananas have 11 pairs. So, what percentage of the DNA in your chromosomes do you share with other species? You share 93% of your DNA with the rhesus monkey and 98.5% with our friend chimpanzee. How about with other humans? 99.5%. So, what makes us different from one another? Well, for one thing, SNPs. An entire set of 23 human chromosomes is called a genome. The human genome is composed of 3 billion base pairs. Variation at a single base pair is called a SNP, or single nucleotide polymorphism. When the body makes new cells, it doesn't make many mistakes. But nobody's perfect. Sometimes, when the genome is copied to make a new cell, a single base pair gets left out, added, or substituted. Single base pair substitutions create SNPs. There are around 10 million SNPs in the human genome, which account for many of the genetic differences between you and everyone else on the planet. Some SNPs account for differences in appearance. Others can affect how we develop diseases or respond to drugs. Most SNPs, however, seem to lead to no observable differences between people at all. Since variants are passed down from one generation to the next, the number of differences between your DNA and your neighbors can tell you how closely you are related to each other. Your genes come from your parents, of course, and from their parents, and from their parents' parents, and, well, you get the idea. You have two sets of 23 chromosomes, one set from each parent. For almost every chromosome you inherit from your mother, you also inherit one from your father, that has his versions of the same genes. Together, they form a pair of homologous chromosomes. The X and Y chromosomes, however, are special. 
Usually, females have two X chromosomes, while males have an X and a Y. You get one of your X chromosomes from your mother. Whether you get your father's X chromosome or his Y chromosome determines your sex. Most adult cells contain two sets of chromosomes, but sperm and egg cells have only one set of 23 chromosomes each. When the body forms sperm or egg cells, a cell divides and pairs of chromosomes separate. A random member of each pair moves into each new cell. This is why, when you were conceived, you obtained half of your mother's genes and half of your father's genes. But your siblings didn't necessarily get the same versions of your parents' genes that you did. Unless you happen to be an identical twin. To form sperm or egg cells, your chromosomes double, like so. When the homologous pairs separate, sometimes they cross over and at seemingly random points, exchange DNA. This is called genetic recombination. Because your genes get shuffled during recombination, the chromosomes you pass along to your children are not exactly the same as the ones you inherited from your parents. This makes it hard to use most of your chromosomes to trace your genealogy back very far. However, most of the Y chromosome is handed down from father to son entirely intact. Likewise, in humans, DNA in the mitochondria is passed down only from mother to child. For this reason, ancestry along your father's line or your mother's line is easier to trace using the Y chromosome or mitochondrial DNA. When sperm and egg cells join together at fertilization, they create a single cell with two complete sets of 23 chromosomes, one set from your mother and one from your father. This single cell will divide to create new cells over and over until it creates a child. Your observable traits, also known as your phenotypes, result from the interaction between your genes and the environment. This interaction begins in the womb and continues throughout your life. Differences in some phenotypes, like height, are determined mostly by genes. If you have short parents and grandparents, you probably don't tower over your peers, though environmental factors like nutrition can have some effect on your height. Genes also play a role in whether you have a healthy body weight. But diet and exercise can profoundly affect how much you weigh. How genes influence your personality is less understood. You can now learn about over a million SNPs in your genome all at once. And every day, scientists are learning more and more 
about how some of these SNPs affect your phenotype. Getting to know your genome can help you understand a little better why you are the way you are and in what ways you're similar to or different from your family, friends and neighbors. Why no why? Only males have a Y chromosome. That's what makes them male. Females have two X chromosomes. The Y chromosome is passed down from father to son, so males have a built-in way to discover their paternal ancestry. But don't despair, ladies. You have the same paternal ancestry as your brother, your father, your father's father, father's brother and his sons. Once you know your paternal haplogroup, you can look it up on 23andMe.com and learn about your ancestry. You can also add it to your public profile if you want to connect with other people who share your ancestry.